you so much. Thank you, Luisa. Uh, thank you, Luisa. Thank you, all speakers. So uh, now uh, we would like to share a very short video from the, the Japanese embassy, which is uh, organizing this great event uh, with us this year. So a special thank you to the embassy of Japan. And also um, we would like to, to present you with a video from João Galamba. Uh, and uh, Manuel Eitor, the Minister of Science and Technology. Uh, so, and we will see at the end. So, I hope you are all enjoying the, our event so far. And uh, see you soon. The world is coming together to tackle global climate change. Japan has pledged to reach complete carbon neutrality by 2050. How can we achieve this goal? Hydrogen is expected to be a game changer in achieving carbon neutrality. Our goal is a global supply chain that will make hydrogen more accessible worldwide, together with the creation of a hydrogen society New concrete technology is an evolution in thinking about decarbonization by using CO2 instead of just reducing it. We'd like to develop this technology further to make the world carbon negative. With technologies like these, Japan is contributing to achieving global carbon neutrality through dynamic innovation, working hand in hand to save the world. Let me start by thanking the, the invitation to speak at this important event. Uh, before talking about the future, I'll take a moment to do a brief tour of Portugal decarbonization path and where we stand now. Portugal adopted the target of carbon neutrality by 2050, having developed a roadmap for carbon neutrality 2050 and also the National Energy and Climate Plan for the 2030 horizon which are the fundamental tools to ensure that energy and climate goals for 2030 and 50 are achieved and done in a forward-looking way. Working towards this objective, our last coal-fired power station will be closed this week. We believe that from uh, 2021 onwards uh, will be a decisive one in driving our national and the world economy towards recovery and growth, preparing for the future, namely through the twofold green and digital transitions and sp through strengthening uh, society's resilience. With our great track record in renewables, Portugal is in the best of conditions to achieve the targets that we have committed to and also to pursue a more sustainable future anchored in harnessing the full potential of our endogenous renewable resources. This trajectory materializes into 14.10 gigawatts of installed renewable capacity in Portugal. That translates into an annual production equivalent to approximately 65% of all national production. This is a huge contribution to the country, both environmentally and economically. Our objective for the next decade is to increase the installed capacity to at least 30 gigawatts, taking advantage of Portugal's significant unexploited solar and wind potential, uh, wind potential namely through repowering hybrid projects and also through offshore energy, mainly wind. The more mature technologies, wind and solar PV, pave the way to the energy transition, but they are not the only route within the renewable electricity generation possibilities. The, onshore, the offshore renewable energy production technologies are vaster. Offshore systems are emerging technologies that have a very strong potential and investment costs are declining every year. Some estimates uh, uh, speculate that if we could harness this type of energy, it could supply a considerable part of the world's energy consumption. Wind offshore is no longer a synonym of bottom fixed offshore. It now encompasses floating wind power generation, better suited to be deployed in many locations of the Atlantic shores, like Portugal. In fact, since along the Portuguese coast, the continental platform increases in deepness close to the shore, floating is the future. Offshore wind technology for widespread use in Portugal. Coastal Portuguese geographical location and the existence of grid infrastructure along the coast, which will be significantly reinforced in the coming years, allows for the future extensive use of this technology. 
which will benefit from the new Trans-European Networks Energy 10E regulation, with provisions facilitating more integrated onshore and offshore electricity grid infrastructure. To respond to this challenge, Portugal will take advantage not only of the existing endogenous resources, but also of the fact that we already have a very significant national wind cluster, created between 2005 and 2008, which is made up of production units for the production of blades and towers. Ladies and gentlemen, our objective in this domain is clear, and the measures implemented in recent years reflect exactly the trajectory to which we are committed. Portugal is pursuing a path of sustainable growth based on decarbonisation, which can only be continued with the energy transition, but this must be understood and shared by all. To achieve this goal, it is essential that legislation and regulation promote innovation, thus not constituting as technological or administrative barriers to this transition. In this context of profound change, like the one we are currently experiencing, it is important, as never before, to adapt the legal framework of the national electrical system to the needs and challenges posed by the main strategic instruments that will guide our country's energy policy in the coming decades. In addition to a considerable effort in terms of organization and systematization, enshrining in a single diploma matters spread over several legal diplomas, ensuring a better articulation of the legal regimes, and as well, an easier apprehension of them by the respective recipients and applicators. The new legal framework intends to be a significant advance in the sector's legislation towards a new energy paradigm. Among the main changes, which are many and very positive for the sector, I highlight the creation of three technological free zones, one of which will be dedicated to pilot projects for the investigation and development of electricity from an oceanic source or location, providing the country with adequate conditions for the development of innovation clusters. One of the three technological free zones will be dedicated to offshore renewable energy, located in Viena do Castelo, aimed at establishing innovation and development projects for the production of electricity from renewable energy sources or ocean locations. Another important change is the inclusion of a study regarding the development of renewable energy from an oceanic source or location, including future auctions. This study will contain an assessment of the potential for installing renewable energies from an oceanic source or location, the needs for network infrastructure and the, me and the measures to be adopted for their respective development. This will include auctions. Ladies and gentlemen, I end as I started. The challenges of the energy transition are evident, but we are aware that, with the path covered in the last two, uh, two years, we are in a good condition to overcome them with distinction. By aggregating all the relevant stakeholders, like those present in this forum, by pooling resources to increase scale, and by having a unique collective focus and drive, we can accelerate the energy transition. Thank you very much for your attention, and I, I, uh, I hope you have a good conference. Good afternoon to all of you, particularly uh, first and foremost to our colleagues from Japan, but as always to AVEC and to Antonio Sarment for keeping us always busy and uh, above all to call our attention for offshore tech technologies, for the future of our energy and above all the future of our citizenship. We should understand that Portugal as today still the world's record and number of consecutive days fully powered by renewable energy. We're four days in 2017 and about three days since then. And that has been possible because of the unique skills and competencies in installing um, windmills and wind energy together and coupled uh, individual, uh, um, and articulated with hydroelectric energy within our energy network which was possible due to skills on the dynamic of complex systems such as those which are associated for the articulation between renewable energy and the electrical network. But we need to continue to do more and more. And that will require certainly taking a clear attention to offshore technologies, um, promoting, deepening, enlarging our knowledge on smart grids, 
particularly for electric or the electrification in the increasing electrification of our society will be particularly critical if we also are able to integrate better offshore technologies, certainly looking at their learning curve because we need to decrease the cost per kilowatt hour, but at the same time to understand the complexities of the integration of offshore energy and wind energy in the electrical um, network. The work of WAVEC in our Atlantic coast, but more recently in the area of Vienna, uh, do Castel and Aguçadora should be a knowledge, particularly through the wind float program many years ago developed together with um, um, EDP and now with a new um, business um, leaders also in, in Vienna, do, do Castelo, where we certainly are um, working together to make a unique experimental fields of offshore um, technologies with a range of applications from offshore aquaculture to inland energy usage, but also, but also for many other activities for um, including um, um, maritime um, um, related issues. And not for that about space. Actually, we have been discussing already with OAVEC and other business partners also in Germany, in Spain, the potential development of our current capacity to design um, offshore platforms to promote in the near future, in the coming 10 years, the potential of space launch from offshore platforms, what we can call sea launch with landing and, re and reutilization of space launchers. We are actively engaged with the regional government of Azores in making it happen certainly from the island of Santa Maria, but more and more we should work together to make sea launch a potential um, uh, future for democratization of the access to space. That is the reason why offshore technologies per se can be important in the medium term in the energy field, but they will have they will have a tremendous impact in many other areas from um, offshore aquaculture, because we, together with the Japanese people, share a common will to eat fish, and then we need definitely to look at offshore aquaculture, but we all of, of, over the world share also the common goal of better explore space and therefore I would like very much to call your, your attention for certainly the amount of spillovers offshore technologies and the, the design of earthquakes offshore platforms if they are uh, sustainable in terms of energy can play in the future of our um, uh, generations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary of State of Energy and Minister of Science and Technology. And thank you all speakers, moderators and attendees of, uh, for being here today, this morning and attending the, the WAVEX seminar. So, uh, well, we asked you a question during uh, one of the, the breaks, which was, which of these topics are you more interested in? So we'd like to share the results. Let's see what uh, you were telling us. Uh, and I'm sharing and I'm seeing that about 32% said web energy, wave energy, 42 offshore wind energy, so this is the majority. Uh, also, uh, well, 4% um, of floating solar, nine on offshore aquaculture, and 11 uh, is interested in uh, hydrogen production. So we can see that we have uh, an audience with uh, different interests, but uh, well, we are very happy to have you all here. Um, so this is the end of uh, our seminar. A pop-up will appear in your screen with a very short survey, one minute survey, and you can rate our seminar. And uh, well, we also would like to share uh, our institutional video with you and one, uh, also a video 
of the GRIP project, which is a project that uh, Wavec is part of. And well, from my side, this is all. I'm very happy to, uh, well, to be here with you, Jeanette. And finish the, the event. Uh, don't forget to visit uh, our website, uh, wavec.org, and subscribe our newsletter and hope to see you next year and in person, perhaps. Well, we hope so. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. There is something truly special about the ocean. From its depth to its dimension, we find a sea of opportunities. Scientific and technological innovations are making the ocean more active than ever before. I noticed that the potential of wave energy for Portugal was far beyond research activity. It could make sense to have a research center, a private research center, more focused in industrial opportunity related to wave energy. And so we start looking into uh, offshore winds. And we understood that for Portugal, and because the deep waters very close to the coastline, that floating offshore wind could be interesting. Founded in 2003 in Portugal, Wavec is a private center of excellence, providing specialized services globally and promoting innovation for society at large. Leader in offshore renewable energies, we rely on science, technology and innovation to respond to the growing challenges the ocean brings us. More recently, we start looking into other opportunities, always related to the ocean, always related to the sustainable exploitation of the ocean. We were involved in uh, the first phase of a uh, a demonstration project that is taking place here in Portugal for offshore aquaculture. Our expertise includes environmental monitoring and assessment, technology design and analysis, project development and operational support, high performance computing and data science, advisory and strategy, with focus in our three main areas. Marine renewable energies, offshore aquaculture, and ocean engineering solutions. Our multi-skilled and talented team works in close collaboration with clients and partners in an open innovation environment, fostering continuous improvement in response to the new challenges of the future. We want to do more and better, and this is our goal. To be a leading provider of sustainable solutions for the ocean. We started a joint effort called GRIP, Grounding Responsible Research and Innovation Practices in Research Performing Organizations. GRIP is pushing five key recommendations to address, implement, make interventions on ethics, gender equality, open access and data, public engagement and science education. Ethics is an integral part of the whole research process. By getting the ethics right, research excellence can be achieved. Research organizations should set course for better representativity. Results and data should be available to encourage reuse, review, replication and continued curiosity. Collaboration with societal actors during the research process suits the scale of marine research and helps align break down the walls between science and society. Encouraging curiosity and sharing scientific capability makes everyone better able to understand. The scaffolding of governance creates incentives and disincentives and affects how research and innovation is done. Why not address governance first if one wants to change the system? We started a joint effort.